right. Uh, this is a somewhat long and boring essay on systemic racism. You may have been requested to see this video because of something you said. You see, I'm making this video because I'm tired of trying to present the evidence of the reality of systemic racism in the United States in the YouTube comment sections. So I'm making a video to link to, to save myself time. I want to give you the evidence to think over because I'm aware that you're probably getting told systemic racism is a lie. I want to give you something to think about. Reference links will be in the comment section. More references will be provided upon request. Black people have a historically <laughs> higher unemployment rate compared to whites and Latinos. Quoting my article from Business Insider here, one Harvard University study found that when blacks and Asians whitened their resumes, for example, used American or white sounding names, they got more callbacks for corporate interviews. 25% of black candidates received callbacks from their whitened resumes, while only 10% got calls when they left ethnic details on their resumes. Since I've read about that study elsewhere, I suspect the resumes the study used were standardized resumes. That is, the qualifications were very similar, only the names and ethnic details were changed. That type of study is actually a study that has been done off and on by in various cities since, I believe, the 70s. And uh, it has always shown that uh, why, that white candidates or candidates with obviously white names got more callbacks. Anyway, apparently it's, it gets better. Some, some companies use internal references. That's a big problem if your staff is mostly white because mostly white people hang out with other white people because that's the way it is. When black people do get hired, they are less likely to be given managerial positions. Probably in part because of that, black people tend to make, on average, considerably less than white people. Not so coincidentally to the other two data points, black people were more likely to be poor because, yes, they're more likely to be out of work and less likely to hold good paying positions. So yeah, they're more likely to be poor. Black people who do go to college are more likely to get less help from parents because their parents are more likely to not be well off. And the black students, uh, in general, therefore tend to acquire more debt. Then, due to hiring discrimination, they have a harder time paying that debt back. As regards to college access, the average white school district receives 2,226 more dollars in funding per child than does the typical black school district. And by that, I mean majority. We don't actually have, just, we don't actually have segregation. We have majority separation. A graduate from a black high school, on average, a black high school graduate is less likely to be ready for college and may have to take remedial courses in college, raising their debt. So how is it that we still have, excuse me, somewhat segregated school districts? We have neighborhoods that are segregated to a degree along racial and economic lines. That's how. 
We are seeing less segregation than we used to have. It, the problem has improved. But black people are the most likely to be divided into majority poor, majority black neighborhoods statistically. So how is that a thing? Black people are the least likely to be given a home loan when they apply, even if their credit rating is fine. And black people are, due to job discrimination, which we've covered, less likely to have the finances to apply for a home loan anyway. Less likely to have parents who are well established and able to help them get a home loan. Because in the 70s and the 60s when white people were developing wealth, well, there was actual job discrimination, there was legal, not actual, because there still is actual, there was legal job discrimination and there was actual policies of redlining wherein black people were de-legit not allowed to buy in some neighborhoods. Another point of systemic discrimination, the justice system. African American adults are 5.9 times as likely to be incarcerated than whites. Before you say, well, black people must be 5.9 times as likely to commit crimes than whites, let me break that down for you. Black people are 3.64 times more likely to get busted for pot than white people. The black and white people use pot at roughly the same rate. So it's real interesting that uh, black people use pot at the same rate, but go to jail for it a lot more. So how much one has to wonder, begging, yes, I know I'm begging the question here, what else do black people get busted for that white people get busted for less? But you say the people in prison are guilty, right? Well, uh, not so much. Our justice system runs on plea bargains. People are encouraged to plead out. They get greatly reduced sentences. People get public defenders if they can't afford an attorney. Most people cannot afford bail, much less afford a good lawyer to go to trial with. A public, a public, public defender will mostly, they mostly just want to clear a lot of cases and a lot of them will push their clients towards plea bargaining. These clients are often, very often, not guilty, but if they fight, they risk a very long sentence. The plea bargaining will reduce their sentence quite a bit, possibly to no jail time whatsoever. Whereas if they fight, they're going to sit in jail. Especially if they have no bail, they will sit in jail for months waiting for their trial to come around. Whereas if they plea out, they may get released immediately. 95% of the people who are incarcerated have plea bargained. Or the 95% of the people who, who go through the justice system, I'm sorry, have plea bargained. I assure you, innocent people plead guilty all the time. I know somebody who pled guilty to something he didn't do uh, it was a class A misdemeanor and he just pled because he didn't have bail money and if he pled out they would just give him probation so now he's got it on his record 
Anyway, quote from the article. According to the National Registry of Exonerations, 15% of all exonerees, people convicted of crimes later proven to be innocent, originally ple pleaded guilty. That share rises to 49% for people exonerated of manslaughter and 66% for those exonerated of drug crimes. So black people get caught up in our so-called justice system far more often. A felony record acquired whether you were guilty or not makes it that much harder to move forward with one's life, doesn't it? Of course, as we've figured out lately, black people are disproportionately likely to be killed by cops. To burn the straw man here, a majority of people killed by cops are white. I know that. That's because we white people are a majority of the population. But proportional to the amount of black people in the population, a many a larger number, far larger than one would expect, are killed. The chances of one being killed by a police officer if one is black are much higher than if one is white. And yes, your chances of being killed by a police officer if you're black are still low. But still, they are there, they are present. And when black people interact with the police, some of them feel terrified, and I don't blame them. I think that about covers it. If you have any further questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section. I will include the references in a pinned comment so that you can look and see that the articles say what I am saying. Anyway, it's just some food for you to think about. Have a nice whatever time it is there. Take care.